Hello and welcome, I'm Jessica Shales and today I'd like to talk to you about Google Analytics. If you don't know what it is, then it's a very powerful tool in your website development. It allows you to see what is and what isn't working in your website and then make changes that help that. So we'll talk about what Google Analytics is, why you should be using it, how to install it, and I'll give you some real examples of the kind of reports and information you get after it's been tracking your website for a while. So let's get started. So Google Analytics, what exactly is it? Why would you want to use it and how can you get started? I can't go into a lot of detail because this is just a brief post, but I think that you'll understand a lot more about it by the end. So why use Google Analytics? If you don't already know, it's tracking software for your website that breaks how you, down how your website is performing in lots of different ways. So you get an opportunity to know what is working and what isn't. In the previous post, we talk about how to make your website perform better, but it's really helpful to actually know what is working and what isn't and how those actions have affected it. The reports are really easy to understand once you know where to look. And I'll demonstrate a few things in a bit anyway, so you'll know where things are. There are different ways to analyze your website. You can see how people are entering your website, leaving it, what's your most popular content and all sorts of things. And you can compare different time periods, so you can literally see how it's improved. You can compare the past year with the previous year, the past week with the previous week, or even a week last year, or just the past couple of days if you want to. You can also configure email reports to be delivered directly to you, which is really helpful so that you don't have to keep on going into Google Analytics in order to, to track it. It makes it much more automated and you're more likely to use it. And best of all, it's free, so why not? <laughs> So how? How do you get started? You need to install, install some tracking code. To do that, you need to sign up for a Google, a Google account if you don't already have one. So go to Google on the, in the top right hand corner, you should get an opportunity to sign up. Once you have a Google account, then you need to create an analytics account. So go to analytics.google.com and you can create an account and then add your website to that account. Now, if you have a HTML website, then you need to get the tracking code that you're provided with there and add it to your website. Whether you have a designer, whether you're doing it yourself, that code, the easiest way to do is to add it to your template and then upload that to your entire website so that the tracking code is on every page of your website. If you have a WordPress website, it is much, much easier. You can install the plugin that I've provided a link for and just follow the steps to configure it. It helps if at the same time you already logged into analytics on that on another tab in that internet browser. And then wait. You have to wait for Google to for Google Analytics to collect the data and create the reports. But this is important. If it if the tracking software isn't installed, then it will not be able to get any data. So it will only collect data from when you install the tracking code. So do it now, even if you're ready, not ready to start having a look at that data, do it now so that you have the option to look from here into the future. So now I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate what, how Google Analytics looks with one of my websites and actually show you around the environment. So I'm logged into Google Analytics now and it's automatically just looked at the, the, the past month for me. This is how it looks. And at the top here, you can see the number of visits and how that has changed over time. If I want to change the time period that is being analyzed, then I can just change it here by clicking on the first date, clicking on the second date, and then applying, which is great. I can also analyze a previous period. So if I just press compare to past, it will automatically pick up the previous month. But I can also change what time period that is by just changing it here. I might want to look at the same sort of time period, but six months ago or a year ago, and I can do that here. And it means that there is another line added, another set of data underneath. So how is it doing based on how it was doing in that previous time period? And you can have a look at why that might have been. So I'm just going to go back to normal. Let's go back to how it was. Oh, and I don't want to compare to the past. It does add a lot more data, which can kind of be annoying sometimes. It's up to you. So you can see, I'm not going to go through all of this, but you can see some basic bits of information that's very important. 
you can see how many visits and how many new visits and average time on website and all sorts of things. Some of these things are automatically added and some of the things you will have to add yourself. I'm quickly going to demonstrate how to add a widget. This is a widget to this area. If, for example, you want to find out where your traffic is coming from, your website traffic is coming from, then go to traffic sources. And there are loads of different examples here, but I'm happy with the overview one. This is an example of the kind of information that it provides. Now, if I like this and I want this to be always added to my dashboard, which is the first page you saw, then all I have to do is press here, add to dashboard, and it will be there. And you can go back to your dashboard and it will be there in the future. So you can have a look through these different things, have a look at what information you'd like to see on this main dashboard and, and, and add and take away and all sorts of things. If you want to delete anything, you can just press the cross here. So the most important ones that I've added that I think that are quite important is your content overview, which tells you the most popular areas of your website, your traffic sources overview, which tells you where people are coming from, your top landing pages, which literally tells you which page people are landing on. It may not always be your home page. It could be another page, uh, like a, a very, very popular post that people are looking for, and that's how they're finding you. So it'd be great to know that, wouldn't it? Your top exit pages, where people are actually leaving, and this is down to interpretation of your individual website goals, whether how people are leaving is good or bad. You need to decide that whether you want people leaving there. You could find that you've got a website leak, perhaps, and people are leaving your website before they've completed the goal that you want. And maybe you need to change that page. Um, there's also referring sites, which actually tells you a referring website is where there's a, a, a link to your website and people are following that link to get to you. As you can see, Facebook is a big one for us. And th these will change over time as well. Also, your keyword is very important. And I'll quickly tell you why. If your keyword is for something that you want to show up for in Google and it's showing well in here, then that's great. It means that your search engine optimization has worked quite well. If, however, it's your company name, it means that your other marketing is doing well and perhaps your search engine optimization is not working quite as well. And if you do want to know more about search engine optimization, then I'm sure that it will be in future posts and you can watch out for that. So I hope that you understand a bit more about Google Analytics and I hope you go right ahead and install it. First things first, let's download and go through the checklist that I provided or use the links that are in the post at Fluid Web Works. This checklist is something that is in one of my courses. I go the web works. I go through Google Analytics in a lot more detail, but I provided the checklist as a little bonus to you because I do think it makes life a lot easier. Once you've actually followed the points in the checklist and installed your Google Analytics uh, tracking code and you're sure that it's working, then wait for a little while. It could just be a couple of days just to make sure that you can have a bit of a play about. Then log into Google Analytics and go through the results, see what you can figure out from it, whether it's exceeding expectations, whether you're surprised or disappointed, and, and just have a think about how you can change your website based on that. Then change anything that needs changing. You may also want to consider other tracking like Crazy Egg. Now, Crazy Egg isn't free, but if you've got a commercial website, it could well be worth it, and I'll probably go over it in another post. Crazy Egg actually shows you how people are behaving on an individual page of your website. Although Google Analytics is great and they are kind of having a go at this, they haven't done, done it very well. You can't actually see maybe where on a particular page people are clicking most often. And I tell you, I've used Crazy Egg and the results are really surprising. So I'll do a future post on it and just keep your eyes peeled for that. If you have liked this post, if it's been of good value to you, then you might want to receive future emails, in which case go to fluidwebworks.co.uk if you're not already there and get on the newsletter. Or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can get alerts for all future videos. And if you like it, then please like it. Share it with your friends on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, wherever you think that people will benefit from it. Thank you for stopping by and I hope to see you next week.